I don't even know how to process or like word what I'm thinking. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. It is me, Alana. For this video, I am going to be doing Is my TBR jar working? Did I get through all the books I said I was going to get through in January? For the month of January, my TBR worked. I literally got through every book on my list, which is amazing. I haven't finished a TBR in forever. It's been such a long time, and I even had time to add in extra things, which it's pretty wild to me because I've never had that. Like I've never had the options to do that. So I will say that a lot of things probably helped me through this. One, the fact that um, my classes had not started yet by the time I had read these, but also I was listening to a lot of them on audio. So I think those like added into what made this so successful. But I think that having a, a little bit of a structure but still like flexibility also helped me because I didn't feel that much pressure to finish these. So yeah, it was just a wild time. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and jump right in and start telling you about the books. So the first book I read in January was Sky Hunter by Marie Lu. This was for the prompt of a Marie Lu book. Um, I gave this four out of five stars. Um, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really good story. I loved the characters and the way the story flowed. And I enjoyed how Marie Lu really brought home um, the feelings of being different or other or an immigrant. Uh, I thought that was really cool. So this is about a girl who lives in this world where it's going through the f process of being conquered so she is living in the last nation that has not been conquered by this enemy kingdom and she is a part of the elite soldiers that are sent out to fight the monsters that this enemy kingdom has created so her original homeland had been conquered by the same kingdom and her and her mom like fleed and were refugees and came to this new kingdom. And the fact that she still fights for these people despite the fact that they, they are so cruel to her is amazing to me. It would just be such a hard, a hard thing for me because it's like I'm fighting for these people who don't even appreciate me. And that's, that's such a weird, weird space to be. So one day they capture this boy um, that the enemy kingdom had experimented on and they realized that they've captured one of their like most powerful weapons and so she unintentionally forms a connection with him and from there they have to fight together like learn to fight together and trust each other and so I think it's really intriguing how it talks a lot about like human experimentation and what it means to really fight for your country and yeah, I'm definitely intrigued to read the second one and see how the story ends because this was definitely a big hit and I feel like it ended on such a wild note so next I read Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim so this was a project that I have been working on I started this book last year and didn't finish it, so I made it a point to try and finish it in, in January, and I did. Um, I gave this 3 out of 5 stars. I thought it was okay. I thought the magical elements were very interesting. Um, but the story itself was just... There were certain elements, I guess, of the story that I didn't really enjoy. It's about this girl who has to, like, she wants to be the best tailor in her land so she could bring, like, honor and money and fortune to her family because they've been really going through some tough times. And she ends up joining the big competition to be the, like, kingdom's tailor. The, th the catch is, though, only men can be tailors. So she has to dress up as a male and pretend to be her brother in order to compete in this competition. The thing that I, I found kind of an 
weird was that her brother's disabled and so she definitely is pretending to be a disabled person throughout the story and I thought that was kind of raw, like weird to me. I know other people have said it's a little bit ableist. Definitely recommend maybe finding a review from someone who is disabled or has a disability to get more on that because obviously I can't speak on that. Um, there are certain other elements like her relationship with the like sorcerer was a little weird. I know that was like the kind of the main romance but I just really wasn't into it I guess. The story wasn't bad. It just wasn't the best thing I've ever read either I guess. I think the other thing is this is a little misleading so when you when you hear about this people talk about about how it's about a competition but the competition only takes up maybe a third of the book and then the rest is just her like proving herself as a tailor so i think that's where it threw me off because i was expecting the competition to take the entirety of the book because that's what they sold it as but it, do it definitely does not so I think I would have maybe preferred it just sticking with the competition, but I can see why they, I guess, couldn't. I am still intrigued enough to read the second book. Definitely just not a favorite, but not bad. Not bad. Next book that I read was Where Dreams Descend by Janelle Anglis. This was my buzzword book for January, which was W's, where, why, who what so obviously this has where in the title this was a 3 or 3.5 it kind of ranges between those it follows a girl who has kind of been i don't want to say trapped because she had a choice uh she's stayed at this house for her entire life it's like a house at the edge of the woods and every night they hold like a casino night almost and she's like the star of the show where she gets to show off her magic and she wants more like she's been she's always wanted to go into the city that the house borders um, but she's always been warned against it and so she hears of this competition that's happening in the city and she realizes that the life that she's led at this house may not be what she thought it was so she leaves and she goes into the city and joins the competition and from there like this big mystery happens because she realizes she can't leave the city um, somebody is killing off or disappearing the acts in the competition I've heard people say this is a Phantom of the Opera kind of retelling or inspirational story I have never seen the Phantom of the Opera so I can't confirm or deny that but I will say from the tidbits I know of the Phantom of the Opera it definitely gives me those vibes it was definitely interesting in some aspects. I, again, didn't fall in love with it, but I didn't hate it either. So it was just an okay story. Next, I read um, one of my winter TBR prompts, which is uh, a book that intimidates you. So for that one, I did These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. I, got, I gave this a 3.5 out of five stars um this was again okay <laughs> wasn't the best thing i've ever read wasn't the worst i was definitely intrigued about this because i normally don't like reading romeo and juliet retellings but since this was inspired by like 19 what 1980s 1960s 1920s shanghai that definitely intrigued me and especially because that was like the height of the communist movement trying to infiltrate that city um so i will say the historical aspects of this definitely intrigued me but the fantastical parts did not that's where it kind of missed me so this is about a girl uh julie jules juliet who is the next head of one of the big two gangs in the city and Roma or is that what the name is? Yeah, Roma who is the head of the opposite gang. And so that's where the Romeo and Juliet thing ties in. So they're rival gangs, they can't be with each other. They you they are exes, so they did have a relationship at some a relationship at some point, 
but due to different circumstances they broke up the they discover that someone is like killing off their gang members using these like bug type leeches like monster leeches or something and they are trying to solve why i will tell you this was not really a romance like i know some people have said it's romance i didn't really feel like it was a romance because like yes they were together and we did get flashbacks or like their thoughts on their past feelings and like kind of what they were feeling now but they never really got together in this book they like we're really good at keeping like a distance so it was definitely different i don't really see how they could be together again because there was a lot of hurt that had happened since they before they broke up and then when they broke up and then from then on so i really don't see like i'm willing to read the second book but i don't see how they could be together and i kind of don't want them to be i kind of would prefer they didn't <laughs> mostly but whatever again the historical aspects of this like seeing how the communist party kind of started coming in and playing a big deal on citizens of the city and then how they tried to like get the gangs involved was definitely interesting to me the fantastical elements with the monsters i wasn't really interested in that i didn't really care overall i thought juliet was an interesting character i felt like she was very very impulsive though um and i feel like she didn't really gain the consequences some of the times from being so impulsive but also i thought her parents for like her being the next head her parents really didn't take her seriously and that really annoyed me because i don't get why you say she's the next head but y'all don't really take seriously what she's saying so i think that was very annoying to me Honestly, the side characters were a little bit more interesting than Julia and Roma in this. Like, Kathleen, my girl, I loved her. And then the two two boys, I can't think of their names right now. I really liked their friendship and their relationship too, and I wish we could have explored more from those characters. Roma was interesting. I liked, I guess, how complex he was. But at the same time, I don't know. They were just kind of okay. Yeah, again, this book was okay. Wasn't the best, wasn't the worst, so going with that so next i read some more books from my winter tbr which was, was to read some manga so i went ahead and i read volume two of kadocha um sauna stage by miho obana so um this is i've already read this series and i've watched the anime and everything so this is kind of just a reread for me because i really love this story but volume two was really volume two was really good um this is where sauna and hayama really become friends and you really start to see Hayama start to kind of fall for her, which is really cool. So, I love that for me. Um, next, I read The Water Dragon's Bride by um, Rei Toma. So, this is about a little girl who gets spirited away into another... I think it's to the past, honestly. Or maybe, like, another timeline. I don't know. And from... And when she's spirited away she ends up in this little town and she because she's from modern times they already notice that she's different so someone decides that it would be best to sacrifice her to the gods to the water god for prosperity and so they do and so the water god uh takes her and he's very cold and very like not interested in humans so he kind of makes her a little like a plaything. um not in a weird way, but just like he he just kind of watches her and he's just like, I don't understand humans kind of observations. Um, I don't know if I enjoyed this that much. I will say I bought it because I liked the pastel colors on the cover. Um, but I don't know if this is a, man a manga for me. So I might just stop here and give it away. Next. Um, I have The King's Beast Volume 1 by the same author, which is wild to me because I liked this one, but just not that one. Um, but this is about a uh, world where the royal palace houses um, beast servants, which is uh, people or like a race of people who are beast like they have special powers or they have like ears. Um, they are basically treated like the lower class citizens of this world. 
So it's about this girl whose twin brother, when she was younger, was discovered to have a special power. And they took him away to be the be servant of one of the princes. And he dies. And so she finds out and she decides she's going to take revenge. So she decides to pretend to be a boy. Partially because um, female beast servants... Um, are not treated well in this world. They're expected to basically be prostitutes. Um, but she also wants to get revenge on for her brother. So she works her way up to earn the title of the King's Beast and ends up being paired with the same prince her brother was paired with. And from there, she starts to um, kind of... she After she suspects it was the prince that killed him, so she's trying to like observe and see if it was him, but she's mainly trying to figure out who killed her brother, how he died and why, and then take revenge. So, I liked this. I thought the story was interesting um, and it was a little funny. So, all right, next I read um, Window Shopping by Tessa Bailey. I gave this four out of five stars. I listened to this on audio. I really enjoyed the audiobook. I really enjoyed the characters. I thought it was really cute. This is about a girl and a guy who meet outside of the man's um, department store. She's like staring at one of the window displays and he asks her his opinion, her opinion on the display and she basically craps all over it and she's like this is awful, this is terrible. And so he then hires her to be the window dresser for his department store. Plot twist though is the girl did just get out of jail. <laughs> so that kind of plays a plays a role against her a little little, little little a little bit but I like the fact that he really doesn't hold that against her he like automatically like has sympathy for her and empathy and tries to really get to know her and be there for her I thought it was super cute um I thought it was steamy um I realized that I think after reading this, Tessa Bailey is a favorite of mine because I really like the way she writes her male characters and her male love interests and the way they, they these relationships in her books form, I really enjoy. So next, I read Rent a Boyfriend by Gloria Chow. I gave this four out of five stars. So this is about a girl who comes from a traditional immigrant Asian family. And so they expect her to do a lot, obviously. Um, go to college, get a good degree, get a husband, all that kind of stuff. And so she doesn't have a boyfriend, but she lies to her family and says she has one um, because she doesn't want to marry this other man, this other guy that's in her community. And so she goes and she rents a boyfriend from this company <laughs> that exists, which I thought was interesting. And so from there, like, she brings him home and tries to impress her family with him. But while she's doing that, she kind of falls for him and he falls for her. So I thought the story was pretty good. I really liked seeing their relationship going from strangers to uh, an actual relationship. I thought it was really cute. I thought it was cool that they could really bond with each other over their shared experiences with their families and just the struggles and pressures that are placed upon them. So um, I thought it was cool. I I was intrigued by the family dynamics, like seeing them play out, especially for the main character. Um, the only thing I wish was just that I wish there was more with like dialogue with her and her mom in regards to just where the miscommunication was happening because I feel like that was like a big deal. Um, but I also will say I'm not from an immigrant Asian family, so I know I'm not gonna understand those dynamics fully because that's not where I come from. But either way, I really did enjoy the story. Uh, it was quite funny, but also quite like deep in some ways especially with drew the love interest he um was kicked out by his family because he wants to pursue art and because of being kicked out by his family he's so afraid to pursue his dreams because he doesn't want to be like he doesn't want to prove them right that he's gonna fail because then he lost his family and his dream but i like that they kind of learn to lean on each other too and they just kind of work through it together so it was definitely a really cute read. Um, definitely willing to read more of Gloria Chow's works. I think I still liked American Panda a little bit more, 
but that's okay i'm not really comparing them comparing them like that next i also read an enchantment of ravens by margaret rogerson i gave this a 3.5 out of 5. i realized i read a lot of three stars in january which you know what that's okay it's not a bad thing it's just what it is but i liked this for the most part i liked that it was short <laughs> Um, the way it ended was very abrupt, and I kind of wish there was more to it. This is about a girl who is who lives in uh, the Fey world, or sh her town is like connected to the Fey world, and she is a very very talented painter to the point where the Fey have heard of her, and they have be some of them have become her clients. So one day, because of her like talent the prince hears of what she can do the prince of the fey i think it's the prince of the spring court or the fall court one of the courts he comes and he uh sits for her and so she paints him but before she can finish he has to go away and she doesn't really think about it but she commits a crime by painting him with emotion and that's bad for him because it shows weakness and he's not supposed to show weakness so he comes back all angry and he's like well now i gotta take you to stand trial for your crimes so that happens but as he's taking her you could tell he's kind of falling for her but also they get wrapped up in this bigger plot where uh they're trying to like kill him i guess and the thing is that, like, there's also a rule where Fey and humans cannot be together. And if they are, they have to, the, the human has to drink from the lake in order to become a Fey. And it's a whole thing. So they also have that against them. <laughs> but the story was interesting. I liked the mystery element of, like, who's trying to kill them. I liked seeing their relationship grow because they really did have a connection from the start. And it just kind of bloomed over time. That's all I can really say about it because it was just... It felt like a like a almost like a dream almost like the way it just like flowed and the things that happened I was like this is wild <laughs> this is a wild time so yeah three out of five stars uh, I have Vesper team by Mar Margaret Rogerson so I'm intrigued to see how she does that um, after reading this but it wasn't bad and I'm willing to give her an, give her other books a chance too I forgot to say so rent a oops. So Rent a Boyfriend was for the prompt of a free choice. So I just chose that one because I had a lot of fantasy on that TBR. So I wanted to add a little bit of a contemporary to break it up. Um, and then uh, An Enchantment of Ravens was for a gifted book because technically it was gifted to me by a friend. So I added that in there. So next, the last prompt that I had on my list was to read a sequel. Technically, I was going to read Arch Enemies by Marissa Meyer. But that did not work for me. I just really wasn't feeling it. So I put it down for now. But I did end up reading a sequel. So first I read um, Glint by Raven Kennedy because of Cell and Monet. Because they kept like telling me I should read this book. So I finally downloaded it, downloaded it on Kindle Unlimited. And I read through it. And I really, really enjoyed it. Technically I gave this three stars. But I really enjoyed this book. To the point that I wasn't even done with this and uh, like through on my Kindle and I went out and I bought these pretty editions of it of the series so far because I couldn't resist. So this is like a King Midas um, retelling. So it follows this girl named Orin who is the king, king's chosen. So Midas, his chosen. And so what that means is like he, she's his favored. She is um, the one he loves the most technically supposedly. Um, and so she is, she has like a very, very long past with Midas and due to that, he has kept her in this cage, like a literal cage in his castle for like 10 years. And over those 10 years, her skin has become golden and she is like in love with him and he's been saying that like this is for her protection whatever whatever so um they this thing happens where Midas gets to uh 
travel to another kingdom because of certain aspects and she ends up going on a journey to get to this kingdom but as she does she's intercepted and she ends up in the hands of the army of the rot king which is king rot who is like he can kill things with his powers and all that kind of stuff it's wild i don't even know really how to describe this as best as i can because it's just such a wild story but it's such a good time i really enjoyed the characters Orin is like i know why people some people say they don't like her but from my psycholo psychology brain i get it midas can choke i really don't like that man um <laughs> i don't like him um King Rot is just a good time. I love him so much. I just, oh, I love him. <laughs> I really became a simp for this series. Monet and Sal were laughing at me the whole time I was texting them about these books. So to complete the sequel prompt that for my TBR, I read Glint, which is book two in this series. So I did read a sequel. I gave this one, I think four out of five stars. This one follows her after she gets into the hands of King Rot and everything that happens. This one has the Fallon family trope, which I really, really loved. You really start to see her grow into herself and I really like that because it takes a really long time, y'all. It takes a minute. It really does. But she starts to really find confidence in herself and who she wants to be. And so I really enjoyed watching that. And she starts to really develop kind of a backbone and a voice for herself. Um, in some aspects, she still needs work. And I'm really hoping in the next book she will grow more on that. Um, but in other aspects, she really did grow, and I really could appreciate that. And I think Raven Kennedy did a good job of portraying that. So, like, something I was talking to Monet about was, like, in this book, they really don't go anywhere. Like, they don't really travel. There's not a lot happening. But in my head, as I was reading this, it felt like so much was happening, like, emotionally for her. So that's what I appreciated um, in this was that, like, they really didn't do much, but it felt like they ran a mile. The whole time because everything was just like emotionally happening so i could appreciate that about the story all right so that was my did this tbr work video i guess the answer is yes because i managed to read all the books and some extras which i love so i'm hoping um february will produce some of that hopefully in this next clip you'll see my february tbr as well and go from there Hey friends, it's me. So this is February Alana <laughs> coming in and continuing the video on whether or not my new TBR jar is working for me. So February is almost over. I have like two days left. So I'm making this kind of early, but really at this point, I think I can kind of call it and like gauge my success on it. So, um... I will say, in this month, I did not get through all of my TBR prompts, um, but I still was able to add extra books in to read, so I still read a lot. I read about 10 books, and I'm working on an 11th, so I still think this was pretty successful as far as just trying to get me back into this like reading mood and like reading more than I was last year and getting through the books on my shelves that have been there for a while. This month was kind of like a seesaw almost. I didn't get through all my prompts but at the same time I'm not beating myself up over that because I still read a lot and we'll go through everything I've read. We'll start with my actual prompts. So the prompts that I did get through for February was read a book with the first letter of your first and last name. And that one I read Always and Forever, Laura Jean by Jenny Han. That one I gave four stars, which I enjoyed the ending of the series. I thought it was really well done. I I thought it was fitting. Like it, a lot of the things Laura Jean was feeling I remember feeling when I was getting ready to leave high school and go to college away from my family and from my friends so it was relatable it just felt satisfying it felt like it was a good way to end it 
I still don't really, I'm not really the biggest fan of Peter K, but I'm glad in this book it seemed like they were really m much better at the communication aspect somewhat than the first two books. Also, like, the only thing I had a problem with was like, and this is the problem I had with him throughout the entire trilogy, was that it just it always felt like whenever someone in Peter's life like was really maybe rude or insulting to Laura Jean, he never stuck up for Laura Jean. It always felt like he had an excuse for that person in his life. So like with, I can't remember her name, the one girl that he, his ex-girlfriend, like when she was clearly, uh, like really mean to Laura Jean, Peter always found an excuse to like brush away her like actions. I watched the movies recently so I could be confusing scenes but in the first book he was like oh she's just jealous because you're with me okay but that still doesn't excuse her reasoning for being rude like it just it doesn't excuse it and then book two she was like well she's going through a tough time again that still really does not excuse her from her actions and even Peter K he was like well we've been really good friends like but but it doesn't really excuse you from that like just saying so yeah this, this is my like sort of issue so that's why I gave it four stars because I was like overall I didn't really like him like him but honestly again it was a satisfying ending, so. Prompt number two was oldest book on your TBR, pub year, or your butt. So that one I chose uh, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. That one I gave five stars. I really enjoyed it. I listened to the audio um, for both books so far, and I felt like I was watching the movie, honestly, while I was lis listening to the audio. I was like, I, I can just picture all the scenes from the, the, the movie, and it's just like kind of fun so I really enjoyed it I really enjoyed reliving Darcy and Elizabeth's scenes because they're just so tense and we love it um so yeah I really enjoyed it uh I'm glad I finally read a classic this year that was kind of a goal of mine just to pick up one classic just one I mean more than maybe more than one but one was the minimum <laughs> so I'm glad I did that definitely still probably one of my favorite Jane Austen novels and I say that lightly because I haven't really seen the other ones or read the other ones so I mean there could be something that tops that but I don't know so maybe I'll like expand that Jane Austen world for myself and read the other books because I do own them Next prompt was read a Cassie Clare book, and that one I did choose Clockwork Prince. I will say I'm going to try to get to it within the next few, two days or so. I do not know if it's going to work for me. So, I might have to, well I'm not going to, I don't know if I'm going to punish myself or anything like that. But, I might have to consider maybe adding that on to a later TBR or something. Number four was Cell's Pick, and Cell Pick, The Beautiful Ones by Silvia Moreno Garcia. That one I just finished last night. I gave it five stars. It was so good. It was so messy, and I was anxious a lot of time, and I was like very, very angry a lot of time. Like I remember at one point in the in the story, I wanted to scream. Like Valerie was giving me visceral reactions that I could not control and it was bad. First of all, it's not about vampires. I thought it was. It's not. It's basically a historical fiction with not even fantastical elements. Two of the characters have like mental telepathy, but even Cell said that could be like honestly just magical realism taking place in the story. But it's not a fantasy, y'all. It's not a fantasy. I was kind of shocked, but it didn't take away from my love for it. So it's about a girl named Nina who has come of age to be brought into society basically. So she's coming in to start her first like season of going to parties and meeting friends and potentially meeting suitors. So she meets Hector who has come back into the city 
looking for a specific person and him and Nina kind of meet first and they kind of form this tentative friendship and then he realizes that sh the person she's related to is the person he's looking for and so he kind of starts to use Nina a little bit to get to the person he's trying to get to. It's definitely a very emotional story to get through. It's hard, like the beginning of it was kind of hard to read because I knew Hector's motives and I was just like, poor Nina, cause like she has no idea. She's so naive, she's new to this. But I feel like the second half of the book, she really grows into herself and she really learns to really stick up for herself, but also to see people for who they really are and not give in to the, the ploy that they're selling. So I really enjoyed that part. Her cousin-in-law, Valerie, I hate that woman. That woman is the worst. She was terrible. I, again, she was, I was having visceral reactions every time. I would get to her POV because I was like, ugh, I don't like her. She's just so, ugh, so gross. But overall, five stars. I feel like if an author can make me hate a character that much in their book, this is already four stars because I don't, like, have those deep reactions to characters a lot of the time. And then the ending, like, I really loved the ending. So that bumped it up to five stars. Simple. So thank you, Cell, for picking that out for me because I loved it. It was so good. I definitely recommend it. But I need to forewarn y'all, there are no vampires in it. No vampires whatsoever. Just saying, okay? <laughs> Don't make that mistake that I made. All right, and the last prompt I have is five-star prediction. And so for that one, I did choose None Shall Sleep. For that one, I actually just started this last night as well, so I'm hoping to finish this by the time the month ends. So far, I'm actually really enjoying it, so I think this could potentially be a five star. Obviously, I still got a good chunk of the book to go, so I don't know, but it's potential. There's potential there. I really like where it's going so far. So then my buzzword, okay, so I will say I did start Behind the Flame. I put it down though, but I plan to get back to it. But I did replace my buzzword, so um, instead of doing We Hunt the Flame, I actually did You Had Me at Ola by Alexis Daria. And that one I gave 5 out of 5 stars to because I thought it was really cute and I really love the story and the characters. So it's about, well she's kind of like a soap opera actress and she gets hired to be the main lead in this telenovela. And so she is in New York with her family. She just got out of a tough breakup and she wants to use this gig to change her career trajectory she wants to do more telenovelas she wants to bring awareness to how fun they could be she kind of wants to get out of the soap opera world and it follows her co-star as well who is like big in the telenovela world but he wants to kind of make a splash in other roles so he takes on this role because it is part of a streaming platform that could like elevate his career and so he has a lot of past trauma when it comes to just fame and fans taking it too far in regards to their idolization of him and so he's just like very closed off very guarded and he likes to keep to himself because he doesn't want anyone like getting too close to him but they meet on set and they form a relationship and they really get to know each other and i thought like their the way they formed their like friendship and relationship was really authentic so i really enjoyed that i loved watching it grow i really enjoyed both the characters because she was very uh fun but like very like gentle and she was just um, like afraid of being hurt which was relatable and then he was very awkward but it was like cute and he was polite and like 
he gave off the air of being conceited but actually he was just very like anxious it was like his anxiety so that was relatable too and i loved both of their families like i loved the fact that the family element was really brought home into this as well so yeah i really loved it i definitely want to read the second book by this author because i think it'll be just as good i will say one prompt from my winter tbr that I did complete was read a sergey moss and i did read and finish house of earth and blood with my friends and i gave that five out of five stars <laughs> y'all um i love that book so much <laughs> I was not expecting to enjoy it as much as I did. It was so fun to read. I really enjoyed Bryce and Hunt's perspectives. But honestly, it was the ending that did it for me. The like way just the ending just like came together and was like bam 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 bam. And it was just like all together like ah. Uh. I don't I don't know how to describe it because I don't want to spoil it obviously. But I'm just like it was it was so action packed. But in like a way that I was like oh my goodness. It was like. Okay, I guess this isn't a spoiler because these movies have been out for a while. So, like, Avengers Endgame. So, when Cap's by himself, and he's, like, talking to the intercom, and he's like, anybody out there? Is anybody out there? And he's, like, about to face the last bit of Thanos' men. And so, he's literally about to lose. And then all of a sudden, I know you hear Sam go on your left. And then everybody comes out of nowhere, and you're like, oh my gosh! That's how I felt that, like, the ending of House of the Blood was for me. I was like, oh my gosh! <laughs> I was like, this ending, I'm getting the goosebumps from that I had in that scene from Avengers. Like, <laughs> it was just that good to me. So I really enjoyed it. I'm definitely now contemplating going back and reading her backlist titles, because... I don't know! I just... It was so good. And then I'm going to go into the books that I did read that weren't really a part of any of my TBR prompts. So I, I didn't time it like this on purpose. But my timing was that I really had finished House of Earth and Blood just in time to go ahead and start House of Sky and Breath. I wasn't planning to start it so soon but then my friend started and i was worried that i don't i was either gonna get behind and accidentally get spoiled or that i would just have fomo so i just went ahead and started i was like screw it so i started it and i gave it four stars i didn't like it as much as i liked the first one i think the first one was still a little bit better for me but i enjoyed the second one i definitely don't know how how miss moss is doing going to go with this with this series however long it's going to be i don't really know where she's going to take it i have no guesses i think the hard part i had with book two was just that there i felt like there were a lot of side quests happening and it just i just didn't know where they were going because they weren't like how the first book the first book could have maybe been a standalone because i felt like some things were were like wrapped up really really well and there are maybe like certain things she could maybe string along into a next book but if she didn't want to she didn't have to you know what i mean but in this one there was just so many things left so unfinished which i guess is the point since like there's gonna be another book but it was just so many things that I'm like, I don't know what's gonna, I don't, I don't know how she's gonna do this. Like, you know what I mean? It just felt kind of like a lot. Like, you know that meme of that guy who has the wall and he has all these like rubber bands and plot points on the map and he's trying to, I guess, prove his point, whatever. It felt like that. <laughs> a little bit, a little chaotic. So that's all I kind of got to say about it. But I'm hoping that she'll have the next book out sooner rather than later. I think I might try and read the rest of her books this year no promises and then the next four books i read were volumes one through four of a sign of affection the fourth volume i believe came out this month so i went and got it and then i reread the first three volumes so i could be ready for the fourth one and i really enjoyed the series it's about a girl who is deaf and she meets this man who is hearing and they basically fall for each other so i think it's really cute i really liked it fourth volume was really cute and now i'm ready for the next volume which I don't know when it's going to come out, but I'm ready for it. Okay, next I read Black Girls Must Die by Jane Allen. This was for Blackathon. I really, I wanted to try and get more into it, but I really was just not in a readathon mood. So I went ahead and just picked up that book since it was part of the, the group book that I was on the team for. And then went back to what I was doing. But 
I like that one. I gave it four out of five stars. I thought it was really relatable in some sense. The only thing is the main character was like 30 and I'm only 25. But in a sense, it was still relatable in regards to like the family pressures of getting married and having kids and having to deal with racist co-workers and making sure you're getting things that you worked hard for and not because of certain privileges and stuff like that. I liked that it was just really a simple tale of her and her life and what was just going on in the moment. I think I will pick up the second book uh, because there's an audiobook for it and I could just easily listen to it. Okay. So this book is about a lady who finds out that her chance of having kids is very low and it's glowing it's growing slimmer due to some things that are happening with happening within her body and so this kind of rocks her mindset of time and where she is in life because she always planned to have kids when she was more established once she had gotten married all this kind of stuff and she's not there yet like she's only been seeing this one guy for a year she's still like vying for this one promotion in her career at her job and she doesn't even really own a house yet she's been house hunting but hasn't chosen one so she's kind of just not there but now like this news makes her kind of panic and try and figure out what she wants to do. Like, does she want to do some type of procedure where they like save her eggs or does she want to forego kids? And it's, it was a really interesting story. Like she really like starts to evaluate her life and where she's at. And I really enjoyed it. I liked her grandma. Her grandma was really cool. I liked the stories that her grandma would tell and her grandma's best friend would tell too. I really didn't like the guy she was dating. I, <laughs> I'm hoping in the next book he'll dip or something because he was really annoying and I really did not like him. I thought he was very manipulative and I just felt he was very egotistical at the same time and it, it, that's a bad combo to date so not here for it. But I really enjoyed the relationship she had with her friends too. I thought they were very genuine. And that's, I think that's why I want to read the second book is because I want to see what happens next, especially with the ending of the first book. You find out something and you're like, well, how did that happen? So I think I'm going in for tea, but we'll see. Next, I read The Family You Make by Jill Chavez. That one I gave four out of five stars. This is about a girl and a guy and they almost have a near death experience on this gondola. And so right before they thought they were gonna die, the man calls his family and he tells them that he has a girlfriend. And he uses the girl as his fake girlfriend because he doesn't wanna die without them thinking he's happy and making them happy. So then they don't die. <laughs> so his family is like, well, where's the girl? Like, we wanna meet the girl. Who's your girlfriend? So he then has to ask her to basically pretend to be his girlfriend in order to uh, make his family happy before he like, breaks the news to them and so she is someone who's not used to having family she doesn't really she's not really close to hers so she has to kind of get out of her comfort zone with that because she's like families run from me they don't really like me but if you really want me to do this I'll do this and they fall in love and it was really cute it was really it was really cute I really liked his family they're very nosy and they cracked me up a lot of the time they were so funny and I like this book because it made me laugh throughout it like i was laughing out loud the whole time i was reading it because the the one-liners and the funny moments were just hilarious so okay those were all the books i read in february so now that we've talked about the books so i definitely think that this tbr jar thing is working out for me I think it's been a success so far, so I think I'm gonna keep going with it until it's not. I also think Libro FM and Audible because and the library because they've been helping me out with the audiobooks, making sure they're they're supplied and ready. And I also think Chanel because Chanel was like, hey, we should all learn to crochet this year. And you know what I do while I crochet? Listen to audiobooks. So that's been really helpful. <laughs> so I think that Overall, it's been a really good 
reading year for me so far. If you liked the video, please like it down below. If you have any comments, uh, questions, concerns, leave all that down below. If you have an emoji you would like to leave, go ahead and leave that down below too. And if you want to see more videos from me, please hit that subscribe button. You're awesome followers in the world, folks. Mm -hmm.